Here's this video's progress. Once we're finished, we've got all the framing members are up. We've got the, the uh, roof on top. We've got uh, the wall, the back wall fleshed in. So overall, the design of this thing is basically weird as can be. We've got one vertical wall, the back wall. We've got these weird diagonal upright spars. So far, we've accomplished the foundation and the back wall. Now, I can't do this with one step. So the idea is we're going to put in we put in a temporary wall, and then we can lean the spars up there. Oh my gosh, the two the two by six spars are twenty foot long, and they only weigh forty or fifty pounds. But they're just kind of an unwieldy right. A twenty foot long uh, board is definitely kind of a tricky thing to handle. Uh, you can see that temporary wall is pretty dang wobbly. Actually, this whole thing is pretty wobbly until I get it all locked uh, locked in together. Uh, but it was definitely possible to set set the things in. I'm holding the spars to the to the joist with these little little plywood gussets. So the gussets are glued and nailed in. Goofy structure like this can't just use the normal code rules. So you have to run like a finite element analysis, which is what I did here. Uh, that lets you check, hey, can I use 2x4s? New. No. Can I leave out diagonals? New. No. Can I leave out other diagonals? New. No. Basically, I gotta build it with these diagonals and these sizes. It's 2x6s and 2x4s, so should be doable. So first uh, first set of joists and, uh, and spar is up. <clears throat> Here's, here's how I set those joists in there. They essentially get nailed to blocking standing vertically in the back. Gosh, I love a pneumatic nailer, just FYI. So <clears throat> the joists really can't go anywhere at this point. They're sitting between the temporary wall and the uh, uh, nailed to the blocking. The blocking is uh, is both glued and nailed into the, uh, the top plate of the wall that we put up last video. So overall, this thing is pretty solid. Uh, <clears throat> so essentially we just need to put in the rest of the spars and this is just a matter of kind of leaning each one in there You can see I've got uh, some adhesive on there and then they get uh, uh, Gusset plates nailed on the top. I put in screws down at the bottom. The thing was just too wiggly So I put in a diagonal on the temporary wall to keep it braced uh, and uh, It's getting kind of late at night here, but uh, I went ahead and keep kept working because I was making progress and having fun so uh, once once a building starts to actually get off the ground, it uh, feels feels pretty nice. FYI, it's about midnight. Sun's out. It's actually almost due north. So uh, by the the light of the midnight sun here, I uh, get a little zoom in of uh, what the blocking looks like. Got a big old chunk of uh, uh, adhesive, uh, construction adhesive, basically holding uh, holding the thing in. And uh, there's some of that uh, construction adhesive holding the blocking in. So not, not much to the framing here. This is pretty, uh, pretty conventional framing other than that big weird diagonal upright. If only it went this fast in real life. Uh, the blocking on the far end is a weird size, so I made sure to uh, put that in first so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess up the, uh, the distance. And, and that way I, uh, I, could, I could nail everything in. So here's the final piece of blocking going in, and of course it needs a little assistance to, uh, to actually go in there. Uh, so you can see how the, without that temporary wall holding the front of the joist, this would really not be feasible, at least with one person. If you had two people, you could maybe hold, <laughs> have one person holding up the joist while the other one is wrangling the spars. Uh, the, the, uh, being statically assembled like this definitely makes everything a lot easier. So here's how I was cutting the spars. I basically made a little template. I uh, grab my skill saw and just chop off the end so it's uh, at the right angle. And then, then it's just a matter of wrangling things over and sticking them on there. Uh, so here's the final the final joist on the one side, and that's uh, pretty much uh, set it in there. I don't really show it, but I measured in the position of the joist, so basically the front back distance should be pretty constant. Uh, so uh, n nail in the final, uh, so uh, sheathing is going to go on the outside, so it's kind of a, a weird gusset there. It's, uh, it's a full uh, two by gusset. Uh, I'm, I didn't really show it on the others. I'm using screws to hold the bottom the bottom of each spar down. You can see the little dots of the the, uh, the screws on the other side. So uh, screwing in the last gusset, and then just a few more nails and uh, this and I <laughs> put in a lot of screws there. So a few more nails. This is the last gusset of the the last step. So cool, so we get all the spars up. Now they're they're really wiggly side to side. 
and they actually kept being pretty wiggly for quite a while. So on top uh, of all the joists there, I ended up putting a uh, uh, purlin. So the purlin is like a little two by four purlin is what's holding the, uh, the, the I can nail directly into the, uh, the roof there. It's really pretty, so uh, two foot wide, uh, two, two foot spacing in the framing members is, uh, it makes for kind of a scary looking structure to climb around on. If they're, it's only 18 inches, a lot harder to fall down between the, the gap between the rafters. So this, this was a little bit, uh, a little bit scary to be eight foot off the ground. Uh, one crucial thing, uh, I did measure in the positions on this 2x4, so I know how, wh where to push each of those spars, so everything's at a nice even spacing. Otherwise, the, the whole building tends to go way off, uh, off kilter. So, uh, n nailing everything in, uh, some of these don't move, and then I realize, oh, it doesn't move because I had nailed it in from underneath, uh, which, uh, so basically, m mess around, pull a nail under what I'm, what I'm standing on, which is always a little scary. Uh, I had some temporary blocking holding the first few spars together because it was pretty nice quarterly the first uh, the first few times there. So got that uh, got that purlin basically setting the spacing between everything. So building building is basically up and assembled. Now to me this is the moment of truth. Does everything line up? Oh yes. So if you've done it correctly, everything's in a plane. If not, uh, it'll all be sticking. You'll see the one one frame member sticking up. Actually, got one one joist that uh, that really arced downward. The thing was uh, probably should have rejected that board uh, when I when I bought the thing. So uh, top side done, pretty much a nice plane of spars. That's good because my solar panels all uh, sit in a nice plane and look uh, look fairly good. I repeated the process of purlins, uh, so just put a bunch of purlins on there. Uh, here's putting some sheathing on the back wall. So the, the sheathing has two jobs. One is just to kind of hold the heat into the greenhouse. Then the other is to hold this wall, sort of uh, uh, keep it from going sideways. Uh, uh, wall really wants to shear, right? It wants to tilt over diagonally. Well, I've got the temporary diagonal uh, bracing in the back. So if you if you fully nail in uh, your sheathing, then then you get some shear strength. So I had to measure in the middle, uh, the middle stud position. So it's the same deal, basically just nailing in a bunch of uh, sheathing. It's it's glued and uh, and nailed in there, so it should be should should be on there. Uh, did did seem to be perfectly sealed. So you, you notice the blocking on top actually uh, seals off the whole inside of the greenhouse, keeps it separate from the outside. Hoping to keep bugs out of the greenhouse. Not not totally sure if that's gonna if I can completely seal it in. Probably need to have some openings just for ventilation. So this wall is pretty planar. Uh, the, the forces of the joists kind of push it around a little bit. I really like those shadows uh, going through there. So th this is kind of a weird set of framing. I, I need a little bit more shear strength and uh, basically shoved some uh, plywood up on the ceiling here. That there's there's going to be some more uh, diagonals go in on top of this. Now, working overheads, here's where I really need another person. Whoa! Yeah, because of stuff like that. So, uh, if a nailer falls on your foot, uh, it hurts. If a nailer falls on your foot and shoots a nail into it, yeah, that's that's a go to the hospital, and then uh, that definitely is not going to be a productive day. Uh, so, uh, do have to be careful doing that. I was uh, I've been working for too many hours here, and uh, I really should have rigged up a little T-shaped thing to hold uh, hold the plywood up. So next up is trying to get the plywood up to the, the top deck. So this is basically just roofing. Man, this plywood was super ugly. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm doing a thing here which I probably should have, uh, should have mentioned more of, of things that I try and do like this. So basically, you know, the boards are sitting in the truck. Rather than unloading them into a pile to free up the truck, it's, if you possibly can, just unload them straight from the truck right onto where they need to go. So here I had to kind of uh, mess around uh, with the first few. But uh, uh, if you do this correctly, basically you can pull material off the, off the vehicle and just drop it right onto the building. And then there's much less kind of handling. So there it is painted. Here it is uh, finished up. And uh, that's, uh, that's the structure. So this was uh, 
this was actually all done about a week ago, and I've been working my butt off on something else before doing the editing here. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. The next next step is to actually put some uh, uh, finish up the framing and then get some glass on there.